Hello, I'm Myra Brower, South Atlantic Council staff. This presentation summarizes what the Council is proposing in Regulatory Amendment 33 to the Snapper Grouper Fishery Management Plan to address fishing seasons for red snapper in the South Atlantic. The Council is conducting public, public hearings because scoping, which uh, you can see what that means on the screen, is not a requirement for this type of amendment and because it would also like any changes to be effective for the 2020 seasons. Um, so what I'm going to present to you is very preliminary in terms of analyses. So in this presentation, I'm going to tell you what the council is proposing and what is not being proposed, why they are proposing these changes, how they would come about, and how they might possibly affect you, and when you can uh, expect to see the proposed changes possibly taking place, and finally, how you can tell the council what you think. First, let me make sure everybody knows the regulations that are uh, in place right now. So this slide shows you the current recreational regulations. The annual catch limit in the South Atlantic is 29,656 fish, which is 72% of the total ACL. The season begins the second Friday in July. The length of that season is calculated and announced each year by the National Marine Fisheries Service around March, more or less. Um, and if the season is expected to be three days or fewer than that, then there is no season for that year. Uh, the recreational uh, harvest of red snapper opens on consecutive weekends only, and that's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The bag limit is one red snapper per person per day with no size limit. And any red snapper harvest and possession restrictions apply to vessels that have federal charter and headboat permits in both state and federal waters. For the commercial sector, the annual catch limit in the South Atlantic is 128,815 pounds, which is 28% of the total ACL. Uh, commercial harvest of red snapper begins the second Monday in July, and the season ends when the National Marine Fisheries Service projects the annual catch limit will be met. And if the season is projected to be three days or less, then it does not open, the same as with the recreational sector. The trip limit is 75 pounds, and there is, again, no size limit. So the council in this amendment is proposing four actions. The first one would remove that minimum number of days uh, for the South Atlantic red snapper seasons. Action two would modify the start date for the recreational season. Action three would revise the days of the week that recreational harvest for red snapper would be allowed during an open season. And action four would modify the start date for the commercial sector. What is not being proposed in this amendment is adjustment of the red snapper annual catch limits, uh, extending the seasons for either sectors, changing the bag limit, or changing the trip limit. If the council were to consider any changes to these things, uh, they would have to wait until the next stock assessment, which is scheduled to begin in 2021. So the council is doing this to maximize fishing opportunities for red snapper and to consider different ways of distributing those allowable recreational fishing days to minimize the potential effects of bad weather on fishing opportunities and also to sort of review how the season structure is working and to get information um, from the public. <clears throat> so let's get into the actions. Action one would remove the minimum number of days for the South Atlantic seasons. Um, so as I mentioned right now, if those seasons are projected to be three days or less, uh, then the commercial and recreational fishing seasons for that year do not open. So the alternative there is to remove that requirement and that would affect both the commercial and recreational sectors. And what that means is that red snapper harvest could potentially be allowed for less than three days. So what does this mean in terms of effects? Um, well, as far as biological, they would expect it to be neither positive nor negative relative to the current conditions since the overall harvest would continue to be limited to that annual catch limit. For the economic environment, they could be positive if the season doesn't open at all under the current regulations. Then uh, alternative two 
could result in some increased economic value for anglers on some trips and also increased revenue for commercial and for hire businesses and other associated businesses. And as far as social um, possible effects, uh, removing that requirement for a minimum number of days could potentially increase problems associated with derby fishing. Um, derby fishing takes um, puts vessels in direct competition and may force some folks to go out in, in uh, unsafe conditions. Section two would modify the start date for the recreational red snapper season. So right now, as we reviewed, the season consists of weekends only and begins the second Friday in July. Um, so the council is looking at potentially changing that and here's their alternative. Alternative two would start the recreational season in May, and um, there's a choice choices there for each of the four weeks of the month. Uh, alternative three, same thing, but in June. Alternative four, start in September, and then alternative five would start the recreational season on May 1st for a portion of the projected fishing days, and then harvest would resume in the fall if the recreational annual catch limit is not harvested. So uh, for this last alternative, the council still needs to clarify um, their intent a little bit more. Um, for example, what portion of the allowable fishing days would be used in May? When would fishermen be notified if any harvests were allowed in the fall? And when would that fall season start? So all these things they're still gonna have to um, discuss at their upcoming meeting in September. So for the biological environment, this. Uh, it would be similar to what we currently have since harvest would continue to occur when red snapper are spawning and release mortality would continue outside of the open season. So red snapper in our region spawn from April through October with peaks in June through August. And under current regulations, um, folks that are catching and releasing red snapper outside of those open seasons, um, those, those fish have approximately a 28% um, mortality. So um, allowing limited harvest during a, a, a portion of when the fish are spawning is likely to not have any measurable positive or negative biological impact since the harvest would still be um, limited to that ACL. Uh, for economic effects, they would be similar across the alternatives on a yearly basis since the length of the fishing season wouldn't be changing. And then in terms of Social effects, uh, of course, opening earlier in the year may diminish those chances of bad weather affecting fishing. Um, and alternative five could allow harvest in the spring and the fall. That's, of course, if the entire ACL is not caught during that first opening. Um, and this, you know, this split could also result in some areas potentially having more or less access to, access to red snapper and resulting in some negative potential social impacts there. So for action three, this action would revise the days of the week uh, that recreational harvest of red snapper would be allowed during an open season. And um, if right now, if NIMS determines that harvest is allowed and that harvest occurs on consecutive weekends only, and that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the council is looking at uh, potentially changing that, and this is what they're considering. Alternative two would be consecutive Mondays, um, again, if harvest is allowed. Alternative three, consecutive Fridays. Uh, alternative four, consecutive Saturdays. Alternative five, consecutive Sundays. Uh, alternative six looks at potentially every other weekend, um, and then the council has the option there to select what constitutes a weekend. Is it Friday, Saturday? Saturday, Sunday, or Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, these are the next two alternatives under this action. Alternative seven would allow harvest to take place the last weekend of each month, again, with those same um, sub-alternatives for the definition of a weekend. And then finally, alternative eight is um, uh, the most flexible, I think, of all these. The NIMS would present the, the season length to the council at the annual March meeting and then the council would provide recommendations to the agency on what dates they would like to see open. So the end of the season would be predetermined and would be announced before the start of the season, and the open days wouldn't need to be consecutive. So in terms of possible effects, 
for biological, it would be neither positive nor negative. Uh, same thing for economic, uh, because the length of the fishing season wouldn't be changed. And then for um, social effects, um, the Saturdays and Sundays would likely um, produce more participation, so that would be most beneficial. Mondays and Fridays, because they're close to the weekend, would have slight, slightly higher participation than the days in the middle of the week. And then spreading out the allowable fishing days could potentially ensure that bad weather doesn't get in the way of fishermen participating in the fishery and would spread out the revenue for, for hire and associated businesses. Alternative A, um, as I said, is, is more most flexible in that it allows um, the council to change the season structure on an annual basis based on the changing needs of the fishery. And then uh, the last action, action four, would modify the start date for the commercial season. So right now the season begins the second Monday in July, and the alternatives are to have commercial harvest start the second Monday in May for alternative two, the second Monday in June for alternative three, or to have it start May 1st to line it up with the shallow water grouper um, season and uh, with no harvest allowed during July and August. So again, biological effects, uh, we're not expecting anything to change uh, over the status quo. Um, uh, as I mentioned, red snappers spawn April through October, and for the commercial sector, that uh, release mortality is a little bit higher than recreational, it's 38%. Um, so, but still, allowing harvest during a portion of the season would probably not have any measurable biological effects. Uh, for the economic environment, same thing, the fishing season, the length of the fishing season wouldn't be changing. Um, so more effects there. Um, and then for social effects, uh, lining up the season with the opening uh, for other snapper species, when other snapper grouper species are available would be a beneficial uh, thing to communities. And um, looking at alternatives Two, alternative three, and the current uh, season, uh, May, June, and July, that's when most other snapper grouper species are still open to harvest. And this is based on uh, considering the spawning season closures that are currently in place in our region and also those that have resulted in the last seven years from um, harvest reaching the annual catch limits. Alternative two, of course, would provide for the longest season. Um, so that's a good thing. And then alternative four could set up a split season, uh, which would allow harvest in both the spring and the fall. And that's, of course, if the annual catch limit isn't met in that first opening. And the split season could help extend commercial harvest and provide social benefits. Um, and in particular, it would ben benefit fishermen targeting other species in the spring or operating in areas that have um, um, inclement weather earlier in the year, because then it would ensure that some of that harvest would still be available to them in the fall. So these proposed changes uh, in terms of when they would take place, the council is gonna review public comment and select their preferred alternatives at their upcoming meeting in September. Um, they are looking to possibly then approve the amendment in December to send it to the National Marine Fisheries Service which means the regulations could potentially be effective um, around mid-2020, probably at the earliest. So the council wants to hear from you. Uh, so we urge you to provide your comment. And in order to do that, you can do it using the online form that's available from the public hearings and scoping meetings page on the council's website. You can send uh, your comments please by 5 p.m. on the 16th of August, and you can send them um, to the address on the screen uh, or by fax. You can see the presentation and access the materials uh, from um, that same web page, and the link is provided in the public hearing document for this amendment. So we are conducting a series of webinars and listening stations for this amendment. Um, so the listening stations is where council members are going to be available in person to take your comment. The webinars are gonna take place on August 12th through the 15th, starting at 6 p.m. Um, you need to register to participate and the links are provided 
uh, on the Council's website. So on your screen are the listening station locations for the August 12th and the August 13th webinars. Here are the locations for the remaining two webinars. So thank you for your attention.